Hello again, everyone. I'm Jim Hitt, back with another installment of Looking for Literary America. In our pilot episode, we took a look at the literary output of Raymond Chandler. But like many authors, he had a second writing life, one that paid well, but gave him little satisfaction. Some authors, such as J.D. Salinger, have shied away from Hollywood altogether, but others have embraced it, not necessarily for its artistic achievements, but for its money. Raymond Chandler was such an author. Chandler said of Hollywood, anyone who doesn't love it is either crazy or sober. Chandler first reached the screen in 1942 when 20th Century Fox used to fill a Marlowe mystery novel, The High Window, as the basic plot for Time to Kill, an entry in the Michael Shane detective series. Lloyd Nolan played the fast-talking detective who bore little resemblance to Marlowe. 1942 also saw RKO use Farewell My Lovely as the basis for The Falcon Takes Over, an entry in the Falcon series starring George Sanders. Only Ward Bond's Moose Malloy is recognizable from the novel. Two years later, in 1944, Philip Marlowe finally reached the screen. Once again, RKO used Farewell My Lovely, this time calling it Murder My Sweet with Dick Powell as Philip Marlowe. Chandler liked Dick Powell as Marlowe, but his original image of the part was of all things Cary Grant. The same year that saw the release of Murder My Sweet also saw the year that Hollywood called Raymond Chandler. Director Billy Wilder thought Chandler would be perfect to adapt James Cain's Double Indemnity. Wilder had read The High Window and came across the phrase, he had hair growing out of his ear long enough to catch a moth. Not many people can ride like that, Wilder said. Later, Wilder would complain that Chandler gave him more trouble than anyone he had ever worked with and vowed never to work with him again. Interestingly, Raymond Chandler received a cameo appearance a la Hitchcock. He is sitting in a hallway as Walter Neff, played by Fred McMurray, passes. For his work on Double Indemnity, Raymond Chandler won an Academy Award. After working with Wilder, Chandler worked on two pot boilers. And now tomorrow with Alan Ladd playing a doctor and the unforeseen a mystery with Jill McRae and Gail Russell neither amounted to much. In 1946 Chandler wrote his only screenplay directly for the screen, Paramount's The Blue Dahlia. Chandler convinced producer John Houseman that the only way he could finish the screenplay on time was to work at home while he was drunk. A desperate houseman agreed and hired a nurse to watch over Chandler while he completed the script. Of Alan Ladd, Chandler said, Ladd is hard, bitter, and occasionally charming. But he is, after all, a boy's idea of a tough guy. Of his employment at Paramount Studios, Chandler said, The only employer that I ever got along with. I began each day by telling everybody to go to hell. They seem to like that. 1946 also saw Warner Brothers' adaptation of The Big Sleep, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Of Bogart, Chandler said, he is the real article. He can be tough without a gun. Also, he has a sense of humor that contains that grating undertone of contempt. Next, Chandler worked on the script for his own Lady in the Lake, but after three months, walked off the set. Yeah, it was just turning over dry bones, he said. In 1947, 20th Century Fox brought the high window to the screen once more. This time, with Marlowe as the detective, the film was The Brasher Doubloon. Unfortunately, George Montgomery as Marlowe was more suited to the saddle than to the city streets of L.A. In 1951, Alfred Hitchcock brought Chandler on board to work on Strangers on a Train, based on the novel by Patricia Highsmith. Chandler hated working for Hitchcock, but he did like the $2,500 a week salary. Eventually, Hitchcock fired Chandler. 
The movie, of course, went on to be a financial and critical success. Chandler said of the film, No guts, no characters, no plausibility, and no dialogue. But of course, it's Hitchcock. And a Hitchcock film always does have something. Even after Chandler's death in 1960, his novels continued to reach the screen. In 1969, The Little Sister became Marlowe, Sterling James Garner as the detective. 1973 saw Robert Altman apply his deconstructionist theory to film noir with A Long Goodbye with Elliot Gould as Marlowe. I've never warmed up to this film, perhaps because it feels so distant from its source. Robert Mitchum played the famous detective in 1975's Farewell My Lovely, which harkens back to the earlier film noirs. In 1978, Mitchum reprised the role of Marlowe in the misguided remake of The Big Sleep set inexplicably in England. For the moment, the big screen seems done with Chandler, although a few television adaptations have followed, the most notable being the series from HBO, Philip Marlowe, Private Detective, starring Powers Booth. Like so many authors, including James Cain and William Faulkner, Raymond Chandler despised Hollywood, although he welcomed the money. He thought that in Hollywood, too many people had too much to say about a writer's work. It ceases to be his own, he said. In the end, Chandler offered his own evaluation of his relationship with Hollywood. If my books had been any worse, I should not have been invited to Hollywood. And if they'd been any better, I should not have come. Ernest Hemingway once said that no good story exists without irony. It exists here too in Chandler's story. In 2015, over 50 years after his death, Chandler received a star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame.